first, but let's talk about last night because don't do not sleep on this Dolphins team. We liked them in the beginning, wrote them off when Tua got hurt, but he made his return. Tonga Bailoa back in action last night, getting the Dolphins to win. Miami moves to four and three. Happened to be my two favorite numbers. And by the way, they are four and oh when Tua starts and finishes the game. Yes, there were some lulls in there, especially in the second half, but he was sharp enough to get it done early, right? He got them to a huge lead, 13 zip out the gates in the Dolphins defense. They got to go win. They're like a locomotive down there in Miami. I liked it. The shots looked beautiful on Sunday Night Football. I was like, I want to be in Miami uh, enjoying that. Uh, they intercepted, you know, who didn't want to be there, Kenny Pickett. Who doesn't? Kenny Pickett looked great at times. He really did, but he likes to take risks and turn the ball over. Three interceptions. Uh, and yeah, I think a bunch of you people watching this show jumped off the Dolphins bandwagon after Tua's injury. But with that win, Miami already back on the right side of the playoff picture. And I don't think they're going anywhere as long as number one stays healthy. So that's my big takeaway from last night. Andrew Hawkins is here in studio. I haven't seen him yet. I'm told he's here. I got to tell you guys, I can't hear anything in my ear. Oh, I'm not hearing program. Like if there's music or anything, I don't hear anything. I didn't hear our show open. I didn't hear the animation. Just letting you guys know in case anybody needs to talk to me. If stuff, if stuff goes down, I don't hear of anybody. All right, but uh, maybe it's because I'm old and I can't hear. But I'm just about as old as these two old Gs. That, uh, <laughs> listen, it's not looking good. Oh, Gs, oh boy. Because we are almost at the halfway point of the season. There's a lot left to go. And when it comes to Tom Brady, and Aaron Rodgers, I'm, for one, finding it very difficult to R-E-L-A-X, very difficult to relax after a brutal 21-3 loss at the hands of the Panthers. The Panthers, who have a fire sale, who got rid of everybody, all right? The Bucks have fallen, my friends, to three and four. Brady has a losing record through seven. Read it and weep. It's the first time it's been the case in 20 years. The last time it happened, it was 2002. Did they make the playoffs that year? Nope, they didn't. Rogers, yeah, Rogers now. Also three and four after falling 23 to 21 at Washington. I said, don't you lose to the commanders. Don't do it. This, of course, despite the help of a pick six from his D. If they didn't have that pick six, it would have been over. I would have been a wrap. I would have, you know, gone and taken my hike and tried to avoid the rattlesnakes in California way earlier in this game. But this is, again, the first time in Aaron Rodgers' entire career that he's had a losing record at this point of the season. Now, I've said this before. But the more, I, and I'm not smiling about it, it's just I don't want this to end this way for either of them. But the more I see both of those offenses struggle, the more I am convinced, and it makes me mad and it infuriates me, that no one is listening to me. These two legends need to start taking things off of their plates. I cannot sit here any longer and tell the Packers to run the ball. I cannot tell Tom Brady enough. Tom Brady, who... His entire career is built around defense and running and distributing the ball. The Bucks' offense is absurdly unbalanced. You just thought 50 dropbacks for Brady to just 14 carries for the Bucks' running backs. Over the last five games, Brady's averaging 48.4 dropbacks per game. And the record says one in four. That's it. The Bucks, listen, they got the talent. It's not quite working with those guys back yet, but they have the talent to get the passing game going. But they cannot be this one-dimensional. I don't know why it's happening. And for Rodgers, I mean, God damn, I can't say it anymore. I just can't. I can't. I, I, and I don't know if it's the floor. I think it's Rodgers calling the shots there. James Jones comes on our show regularly. Our fan, hold on a second. Our fan duel family. And I say to him, does he have it in him to run the ball, to not take shots? And then these series happen where they should be running and he's throwing and all of that. It's obvious that Rodgers is taking it all on his shoulders to fix it and make it happen. I've said for weeks they need to run the football. I don't even know why I'm sitting up here anymore. Like, I quit at this point. I don't even know if I can talk about the Packers anymore. 12, 12 carries. I said here Friday, simplifying the offense means Aaron Jones. They have a tandem. A.J. Dillon, 12 carries. And they did get Aaron Jones involved in the passing game. A couple of beautiful grabs out there. 35 passes for Aaron Rodgers. And to who? I don't even know what we're doing here. 
I feel like both of these guys are trying to shoulder the load themselves. So the, the question I was musing on this morning is who's making the decisions? I want to blame LaFleur and I want to blame, you know, the coaching staff down there in Tampa Bay, everybody involved. But we all know that it is Aaron Rodgers and it is Tom Brady that have control over these offenses and at the line of scrimmage. And it's them. And you guys both know better. And I love you both. When you've been your most successful, it has not been because you are throwing 50 times a game. It's when you are taking what the defense is giving you and trusting the guys that are around you. I can never give up on either of these quarterbacks, but I th I'm i real panic button, like trigger happy. Like, l let's go here. It kind of reminds me of, and they're, you know, Rogers is, is like a year older than me, so it's not like an ageist thing. But at a certain point, these coaching staffs might have to trick these quarterbacks into not doing so much. And like, listen, my dad loves to shovel the driveway when it's snowing in Chicago, and he loves it. And I, you know, but he's in his 70s, and it's, you know, I have to say, hey, dad, why don't you help me with this paperwork? I don't understand my my car insurance or health insurance. Can you look at this? And I sneak out and I shovel the driveway, or I convince him somehow because otherwise, like, my dad's always going to want to shovel the driveway. At 85, he'll be out there shoveling. You have to sort of find a way to finesse that situation into doing what's best for the team and that of course is run the ball and stop shouldering everything i basically just called aaron Rodgers and tom brady 80 year old men which is not what i'm saying i'm saying the coaching staff is just as important and just as responsible for what's been going on all right let's talk about oh something happy how awesome is this whole Daniel Jones thing? Because there's been this narrative that he's not great, and there's a narrative that he's a good leader and he's tough, and then there's this narrative that he's just kind of along for the ride and what's going on in the hoopla in New York. And after then beating the Jags 23-17, the Giants doo -doo -doo -doo, are 6-1. and one. And to put that into perspective, guys, they have won six games in an entire season just once since the last time they made the playoffs back in 2016. That is insane. It has been an incredible early season run. We are all here for it. But there has been this feeling that, oh, uh, like Daniel Jones is fine. It's all Saquon. That it's you know, it's all Brian Dable. Daniel Jones is just there. It's the defense. Uh, and I, I will say that's not completely unfair. And I won't say that. But after yesterday, that narrative is dead. More rushing yards than Saquon Barkley. He put the ball in the air 30 plus times. Gorgeous touchdown to Slayton. He converted some key third downs. Ran for 107 as you saw in the score, averaging just under 10, 10 yards per carry. There's still a lot of season left and a lot to be determined as to whether or not uh, the Giants offer him an extension, whether or not he's the future. But what a step in the right direction. He had to do things, he did them, and he did them well. So we continue to celebrate the Giants into week eight, which we love. Um, another big takeaway of mine, and I need to hear yours, because there's so much to chew on here. So Up and Adam Show is our Twitter handle. Get it going. What needs more real estate in our 60-minute uh, program here? Uh, Andrew Hawkins is backstage somewhere probably causing a ruckus and ready to come out here and hang out and party with me to wrap up the rest of, of week seven to get you set for tonight's action as well. Um, but another big takeaway, speaking of wide receivers and Hawkins, is that uh, I'm ready to say the Chiefs officially don't miss Tyreek. I was kind of back and forth on this all year, but I'm ready to admit the Chiefs don't miss Tyreek Hill. Mahomes lit up the scariest defense in the land, in my opinion, the Niners, 423, three scores. He fueled this 44-23 blowout win. But it was even more impressive than that. It really was. He had seven completions of 20 plus yards to four different receivers. The big plays, people, they are happening without Tyree Kill. MVS and Juju, each over 100 receiving yards in this one. That is the first time Mahomes has gotten 100 plus yards out of two wide receivers in the same game. The first time ever, McCole Hardman was the so fetch of the NFL. We're all trying to make, it's like a, the Kevin White effect. We're trying to make McCole Hardman happen. And he had himself a day. So cheers to him this morning. He became the first wide receiver in the Super Bowl era with two rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown in the second game. This offense looked just as explosive as ever. And you see the chemistry building between Mahomes and these weapons with each passing week. So I'm just going to say this. And Bills fans think I hate him, even though I love him. Bills fans, Brian. Don't say it. I'm not saying, I'm saying simply, well, first watch out for those bangles because they are comfy and looking good. But I will also say, Bills fans just don't get too comfortable during this bye week. 
I'll say that. Don't get too comfortable, you know, as you have it. You weren't playing. Now you've got the, you think you've got the Packers, the lowly Packers next Sunday night. I don't know. We'll get to that Aaron Rodgers uh, and versus Josh Allen for week eight. But uh, later in the show, we'll, of course, hit the Chiefs and the 49ers with our Bay Area friend, Stas. Guys, Stas is coming on the show. <laughs> After that loss, this is going to be a joyous occasion on Up and Adam's show. Don't you guys like my, uh, my jacket?